Thank you, Gloria, and thank you all for staying and being here still so late in the day. Um, I uh, have had the privilege of working with Caltrans um, as an independent consultant for a number of years. Speak uh, into the mic, Mike. Oh, okay, I've had the privilege of. Oh, yeah, the mic. Is this on? You know? I think so. Um, I've had the privilege of working with Caltrans for a number of years, um, proceeding to Willis Bypass and now into the mitigation um, period. So it's, it's very interesting. And um, so the title of my talk is Thorpoga Hungarianus, Relocation and Rehabilitation. And I'm going to try this out. <laughs> um, the Willis Bypass meets a rare grass. Uh, we're going to be calling Thorpoga Hungarianus, North Coast Semaphore Grass. Um, it, throughout this talk because it's less syllables and easier to say. So I'm going to tell you about the grass, how it became a subject of great concern for Caltrans, and how the requirements of the incidental take permit, the ITP, um, guided a complex series of actions that after six years has encouraging results. So I don't know if this is good news yet, but it's encouraging. <laughs> so, um, so first, North Coast Semaphore Grass. It grows one to sometimes almost two meters high. It has a distinctive racine where the um, spikelets come off one side, hence the Greek name, plural, pogon, side beard. Uh, it blooms from April to June. Uh, its vegetative characteristics are very important when we're monitoring, because many times we're not finding plants with inflorescence. So good to know that the base of it is deep maroon and the plant is glabrous, uh, so very smooth that you are able to touch it up or down, no scabrosity. So uh, it occurs in grasslands and in, in riparian woodlands. Um, it is summer dormant, so in July, it looks like this over here, um, where it turns coppery yellow, and then it dies all the way down in, in midsummer. And then with our first rainfall, it becomes the first blush of the riparian woodlands. Uh, it's a California endemic rare plant uh, 1B1, state ranked uh, S2 and known only to occur in Marin, Sonoma, and Mendocino counties. The Willits Bypass is an eight and a half mile two lane elevated portion of US Highway 101. Um, it's located in Mendocino County and uh, where botanists found North Coast Semaphore Grass in 2007 is right in this area. Now, there was no bypass there at that time, but it was right in this part. And this field here is the area where, um, that was chosen for relocation. So a lot of this talk is gonna be about this field. Uh, <clears throat> and construction began in spring of 2013 and was completed in the fall of 2016. Uh, this is, I'm, I'm pointing with my hand because I haven't seen this pointer all day when people were pointing, so. Um, this is where Willits is, where the project is located. Um, here is the town of Willits, and this is Little Lake Valley, which surrounds um, the town of Willits. This triangle here is where the population was found in 2007, and the red areas here and here are existing populations that were known. Um, and this is a blow up of all these populations which Caltrans ultimately purchased for mitigation and for rehabilitation and enhancement. Uh, but first, agencies were concerned that this would be a jeopardy take and so uh, we mounted a three counties search and visited Mendocino, Sonoma and Marin counties in all of these CNDB locations uh, where we did abundance surveys using random sampling and we also looked at hydrology, vegetation, and soil conditions and recorded them. Um, it was determined that this would not be a jeopardy take, and so an incidental take permit was granted to Caltrans with the following stipulations. Groundwater wells and data loggers were, would be installed to measure soil moisture um, in areas where North Coast Semaphore grass was both present and where it was not, um, so that we could find suitable microsites for the relocation. Um, in addition to that, um, there were 350 data points we collected, um, soil uh, temperature with handheld probes, soil temperature 
and soil moisture yeah, for three years, semi-monthly, from April to July, trying to understand the differences between where pluripogon was well suited and where it was not. Um, and in the ITB was seed collection. We collected seed for three years and um, on, on the site that was to be impacted. And then it was retained by, partly by Rancho San Ana Botanic Gardens, and also the remainder was kept by Caltrans. Now I put this in big print because I think this is a really important part of the incidental take permit, a crucial part. A provision was made for one remedial planting if survival was to fall below 60% by year five. So just keep in mind here, 60% by year five. Um, whoop, a second. No? Okay. So in the meantime, um, there was no published literature as to whether or not this plant could be relocated. And, um, and there was incidental information that indicated that it was problematic at best. So um, we conducted a pilot planting program where we moved 56 North Coast semaphore grass plants. This is one corner of that field that I showed you. And um, 26 seedlings were transplanted. Well, we had a short time to monitor these, but six months later in May, we had 100% survival of both. And in December of 2012, we had a 73% survival. Um, of the seedlings and an 88% survival of the rhizomes. Well, December of 2012 was also the winter right before um, construction would begin in 2013. So we had to waste no time but to relocate the plants. Uh, first, we started out using mechanical means, and um, shortly after that, as we started to get significant rain, rain excuse me, um, the the uh, field became saturated and we realized that we shouldn't have anything out there besides an ATV. So all the rest of the work was done by shovel and uh, an intricate grid work of um, planting areas were laid out. And so these plants were all flagged in place, dug up, put onto uh, an ATV trailer and driven off to those various planting blocks and planted three feet apart in rows, three feet apart. Um, and in total, we moved 5,232 North Coast and Four Grass plants. Um, the aftermath is that the field looked like this, and we put my glasses on. Oh, so, I, in spring of 2013, annual monitoring began. Um, and this is what it's like to monitor a grass in a grassland. <laughs> yes. um, and also in 2013, the drought began. So by the time the last North Coast Semaphore grass plant was relocated in January 2013, 72% of that year's rainfall had already occurred, and we only got four inches before the following February. So it looks something like this. This is when we put in the plants. Very dry spring, of course dry summer and then very dry fall, dry winter, and finally in February we get some rain. And this is three years of drought. So, um, North Coast Semper Grass survival plummeted. Um, the first year we had an 86% survival, second year 71.7, third year 23.9. Still the good news part <laughs> of the soccer league. Um, but not at that moment. So we needed to find out what the cause was. Was the cause the drought? Or is that too easy? Was it perhaps a change in hydrology or both? Um, hydro uh, Caltrans allowed us to do a hydrology study to determine if construction had altered flow or ponding patterns. Um, and this is the giant soil berm that is part of the five pass. And this is the field where we planted. This is what that soil berm looks like from below looking up. But you can see it can be quite an obstruction to water flow patterns. So fortunately, we have data from uh, studies done in 2010 that map the hydrology of this field. And so this light green here 
is where the, um, the longest duration of ponding took place during that year. And so there's your mapping. And the dark blue is the same study done in 2015 after this part of the freeway was constructed. So we do have a change in hydrology. And these little squares up here are the planting blocks. Well, we had collected uh, spatial data on all surviving plants um, in 2015, and then we were able to overlay it with the um, hydrology study and see area where the areas of greatest concentration were of survival. And that began to, to tell us a little something more about the needs of this plant. Um, and I mean, drink of water, just a second. <laughs> So, um, 2016 promised to be a wetter year. Remember, we're only at year three, right? Uh, we haven't even made it to year five. But, so, um, Caltrans agreed to an early remedial planting because we wanted to take advantage of what, what was predicted to be an unusually high rainfall for that year. So, seeds were tested for viability, 87% were viable, and corn flower farms grew out 4,300 plants um, in the form of plugs. The remedial planting was a joint effort of the California Conservation Corps and the Mendocino County Resource Conservation District, who also supplied some labor and helped us with a funding mechanism. Um, remedial planting results, 2016, we had 94% survival. 2017, down to 61% and back up to 64% by year three. So we've got some leveling out here which is encouraging. Um, now, remember those four parcels that I showed you earlier that Caltrans purchased? Well, um, those were purchased for rehabilitation and enhancement, and we had both um, grasslands and woodland um, rehabilitation to undertake. So, uh, in 2015, a rehabilitation and enhancement plan was written, and much of, for both the grass and the riparian, but much of the riparian looked like this, with tiny pockets of North Coast semaphore grass in the center and some on the edges. But we were very fortunate to have had one landowner that owned it prior to Caltrans who had managed the land differently. And they had always kept the understory clear and they grazed cattle in the woodland in the summertime. So that became a reference site. Um, and so the plan recommended removal of large woody debris and um, woody understory vegetation, mostly blackberry, um, both native and um, Himalayan. And the recommendation was to, was to masticate the understory and remove all ash trees below six inches DPH. This is mostly an ash woodland with some big sign signature valley oaks. And then the prescription called for planting. Um, and we have planted for two years now, a year ago, December, and this year in December. And so we're selecting areas now that we can actually see the topography of the land and the micro um, hydrology that run, you know, the possibilities where water runs through, then we are able to start to select sites to um, introduce seed and all the seed is collected on those parcels. Um, now, managing North Coast semaphore grass and grasslands is an entirely different matter. Um, and our, our biggest obstacle is harding grass, Valeris aquatica, uh, which tends to make a, a monoculture and shade out other species. So, um, Mendocino Resource Conservation District, who are the land grazing managers at this point, and that we work with closely, are um, they conducted a phenology study and to understand the life cycles of both these plants, and in using that, they were able to, they're developing a, um, a strategic targeted grazing plan so that they can, uh, cattle will come in and graze the harding grass while it's still palatable and not disturb the uh, maturation of North Coast semaphore grass. Um, so where are we now? Um, 
Well, remember in 2015, we were down at 23.9% survival in the, that establishment area that I showed you early on. Um, and we are now up to 31.3% survival. Um, and so by year six, when we combine the remedial planting and the original relocation, we, we have 4,435 surviving North Coast semaphore grass plants, which is 84% of the original relocated plants. Um, also, in our early efforts to establish North Coast semaphore grass in the woodlands, this is how we want it to look eventually. Um, but we are opening, we opened up the canopy to let more light in, to reduce the competition, and so we will be mapping the results of that for the next eight years. Um, this is an area that we seeded a year ago in December, and all of our um, 16 plots, we had an average of 8% cover uh, this year. So we have, we know that it is establishing by seed, but the plan also called for um, a, an additional planting, if we didn't have adequate success by um, year five, then we would grow out plugs and we would plant plugs. So that story's not over yet, but it's encouraging. Um, also, early trials suggest that hardy grass can be treated um, to enhance the most post semaphore grass so it's reproductive cycle. As, um, and that is something that Mendocino County Resource Conservation District, the um, grazing managers are actively working on. So what have we learned? Well, we've learned that post-construction hydrology studies have allowed us to see where hydrology has been altered um, and understand that when construction happens, there the things do not remain the same. So um, then phenology studies have provided a useful guide for invasive plant management We've learned that seed collection and an opportunity to do a remedial planting allow for adaptive measures to be taken because you don't always get it right the first time. Um, and finally, we've learned that rare plant management requires vigilance, always asking new questions, and a little bit of luck. So I want to give my sincere thanks to Chris Collison, and Cal Trent, senior biologist, who, who was there every step of the way as I brought questions to him. He, you know, allowed us to go further with studies. Um, and I, think, I feel like he's very critical in the success that we're having. Um, and I see up in the National, Jeff Kozlowski and Harry Oaks, the Mendocino County Resource Conservation District, Chris Bartow and Kristen Cooper, and Caltrans Associate Biologist, Maureen Drummond.